Well, hello, and welcome back to Femme Noir Podcast. We are a film review podcast analyzing and reviewing films that are written by, directed by, or starring women. Um, I'm Serena, and... I'm Whitney. (laughs) And today we are going to talk about the movie The Menu, which just recently came out. It is directed by um, Mark Myloid. It is a comedy horror thriller. You can watch it currently on HBO Max. And it stars Ralph Fiennes, Anya Taylor-Joy, Nicholas Holt, and Hong Chow. It's about a young couple who travels to a remote island to eat at an exclusive restaurant where the chef has prepared a lavish menu with some shocking surprises. Very good synopsis. Yeah. Um, it's a good synopsis that doesn't give anything away. Yeah, I wish it hinted a bit more. Cause, so this is not a synopsis that I wrote. This is something that I I pulled mm-hmm. um, from IMDb, which they use to promote the film. Um, I wish it hinted a little bit more at like how it's more of like a psychological thriller or even just a bit more the horror aspect of it even though it's not too much of a horror it it does have some of those elements in it yeah like the psychological thriller yeah weird things happening Mm -hmm. but you know that if you watch the trailer yeah i think in the trailer they have the whole scene of like we're absolutely gonna die here and then the scene of, like, you told them it was my birthday, and they're like, it seemed funny about three hours ago. <laughs> I feel like they dropped the ball on marketing this film. Um, a lot of the things that I've seen about the film, from, because of the trailer mostly, is people thought it was, like, a movie about cannibalism. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, and there's no cannibalism in the movie. Interesting. Um, I just... It ended up being exactly what I thought it was going to be. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I, when I watched it, I thought that there might be, like, a little bit of it, but not as much as other people were talking about. But for the most part, it was what I thought it would be. Yeah, I thought it was just like a, did we find a duo here tonight and... Like, maybe that there was going to be, like, an element of, like, oh, somebody here is evil. And, like, the chef knew and was, like, exacting his revenge. Like, I I wasn't expecting as much of the, like, social commentary, that's for sure. But I enjoyed it. Oh, (laughs) yeah. There's there's so much commentary in this film. (laughs) I think, like, I want to, I almost want to say, like, I think it's too smart for me. Um, Because, like, I... I got a lot of, like, the most, like, basic spelled out stuff for you, right? And then I started watching and um, listening to people, like, dissect the film a lot more. And I'm like, am I an idiot? Like, did I just miss? I wouldn't know what it is, but, well, I guess we'll find out. Yeah. But, yeah, because I, I didn't look at things of people talking about the movie. A lot of stuff that actually came up on, like, my TikTok and, like, Instagram feed were people talking about how they felt that there were people that were essentially being the people of the movie satirizes Mm -hmm. about the movie. (laughs) Like, like this one girl was like, yeah, I told someone that I was fine with the movie of the menu. I had fun watching it and that it was like cool. And they got so mad at me and were like, you didn't get it. And I was like, that seems a little odd considering that the movie, like the entire point of the movie is that, I, I, I like I, making fun of people like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think I've also seen that TikTok. You know, just like that's such an interesting like discourse because like watching the movie, I was like, like I guess when I was watching it, I was kind of like, oh, like I get it. It's not subtle at all. Mm-hmm. And then I guess other people think it is. So I'm not like I was like, oh, it's like very on the nose. Like it's not subtle. Like I so I think they want you to focus on on the no- the on the nose aspect the stuff that like i originally focused on mm-hmm. and then when we start talking about the breadless bread plate 
that I think is where I've got some stuff to, stuff to say. That part was so um, yeah, but I think I think that I think the breadless bread plate ties in all like the on the nose themes and then all like the subtle themes mm-hmm. together. And that I think that scene kind of separates a lot of the two people. Either you get the meaning, like I I almost feel like that scene even makes the movie like if you understand the scene then it makes the movie. If you don't understand the scene, then you're just going to think it's a good movie and move on with your life. Oh, you're just like, oh, okay. That's fun. Yeah. That like, fun. I guess in the chef's word, it's like that scene is, it, de- it de- determines if you're eating or tasting. That's also kind of the turning point of the movie, too. Which is, mm-hmm. is like, that scene is, I think I literally wrote down, I was like, this is the turning point because that's when all of the like weird things start connecting like Marco mm-hmm. doesn't eat and she's like there's no food here and he's like who are you and then that's when um Elsa mm-hmm. says to the rich guys like you'll eat more than you deserve yeah but you'll you'll eat more than you'll ugh. you'll eat more than you deserve but you'll uh something something I literally wrote it. oh gosh I don't yeah know I'm trying to get yeah. <laughs> I actually had to rewatch that scene a whole lot to like just comprehend what she was trying to say because for some reason my brain didn't want to register it while I was watching it. You'll eat less than you deserve and more than oh, less than you desire and more than you deserve. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Why that was so hard to verbalize my words. Um, but yeah, I really do like that scene. And I was interested about the fact that, like, the only news I saw about this movie was just people arguing about it. And I was like, that's such an interesting discourse, because I didn't think that there would be anything to argue about with this movie. I was like, it's pretty obvious what it is. Like, even if you are getting it on a basic level, like, you're still getting the point. Yeah. I don't know. And, like, literally that scene at the end, too, was what I was kind of, like, this whole thing, like, those people that are being, like, overly, like, oh, you don't get it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm, like, you're literally the person that Margo's talking to at the end, and she's, like, you've taken the joy out of eating. Mm -hmm. Like, you've taken the joy out of watching the movie. Everything here has been, like, a concept, blah, blah, blah. blah. But, like, you forgot that, like, the true purpose is to, like, sit down and make something people actually want to enjoy and like. Yeah. (laughs) I was, like, you guys... Hello. <laughs> How did you miss this? Yeah. But anyway, um, yeah. So before we dive into the movie, I will give a brief kind of recap of what we're gonna go over. Um, we've been doing a lot of movie news lately, but to kind of keep it shorter and a little. Because our analysis section has gotten a lot longer, we're just going to skip over the movie news part, and we'll probably do movie news as separate, like, their own individual episodes, and they will probably be separate, um, just for, like, you know, people, like, on our Patreon and stuff. So if you are interested in that, then you can check those out when we air them. Um, after... We kind of go over just like introducing ourselves and the synopsis, which we've already done. Um, we will dive into the movie, and then after we kind of talk about the themes and scenes and everything that we picked up on for the film, we will uh, then play our favorite game, FMF, which is Fuck Mary Friend Zone, where we rate the prominent men of the film and decide which one of them we would fuck marry your friends um and then after that we will do an overall rating of the movie and then we will kind of just give you any updates concerning the podcast so yeah i guess now we can in fact dive right into it so let's go opening up immediately for this film is such a great scene i have to say mm-hmm. because i we did find the script for this movie um give me one sec i'm gonna pull it up confession time i was supposed to read that this morning and i didn't 
what's funny is i didn't read the whole thing i literally just read the opening scene and i was like wow <laughs> i was like if i read this whole thing this will be a seven hour long <laughs> set up like i podcast episode yeah i had to read a lot of scripts for college um so like i feel like i'm fairly fast at reading them but this one i do want to take like my time reading it i don't i don't want to just like rush through it to do like a quick compare and contrast yeah i was like this it's like so there's just so much in the writing like it's just really good <laughs> to where it would just be such a long freaking it would be so long <laughs> just to like dissect to talk about all the things um but i do want to read the first little bit of the script because that first scene was kind of great so you open from black there's a nautical bell fog horns waves lapping the shore seagulls um they're standing on a dock it's a young couple uh, they're dressed elegantly for a big night out. Marco stares off into the distance, a little bored, and Tyler drums his hands against his leg, and his eyes dart around. He's a little panicked. Uh, Tyler asks for the time. She just looks at her watch nonchalantly and says, like, it's 626, and he goes, oh, shit. And Marco's like, Tyler, relax. He goes, no, sweetie, this is bad. I'm sure it's fine, babe. Well, where is everybody? You're positive we're in the right place? Yes, I followed the directions on the website exactly. Okay, well then, reset the mood. We've still got four minutes. Um, he nods, unconvincingly. Margot lights a cigarette. Tyler notices and grimaces. Babe, please don't smoke. It'll kill your palate. Then my palate will die happy. Hey, Margot. This tone stops Margot in her tracks. She looks at him. The mood is suddenly tense. He's dead serious. He goes, tonight is huge, okay? The flavor profiles. It's all super delicate. When you smoke, you ruin your ability to appreciate them. Please. After an edgy silence, Margot stamps out her cigarette. Fine, Jesus. Thank you, Tyler says. Uh, the foghorn blows, and they basically are about to get on the boat. He goes, thank God. She goes, is everyone going to fit? He goes, easily. There's only 12 customers. And she goes, a night? How do they turn a profit? 8.50 ahead. That's how. You're fucking joking, right? <laughs> Come on, let's not ruin this by talking price, yeah? Just go with the flow. Let it be magical. She juggles and shrugs. Hey, it's your dime. Just that conversation in itself, which is exactly what happens in the movie. Nothing about that was changed. Um, was just kind of great because it kind of sets it up as if they like they notice they kind of hint at the fact that she's not like they are not really together even though they're physically in the same place and like they're talking to each other but the way that they're talking like there is like a tension there and you're kind of like okay so they don't quite like each other yeah that much right now like why is she hanging out with him he's paying for this like crazy thing like is it just like She's really trying to, like, understand him. Like, what is it that is about this couple? It's just slightly off-putting. Mm -hmm. And she goes, like, hey, it's your dime, whatever. Like, you wanted to do this, I'm just alone for the ride. She does not care that much about this. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's, like, kind of, like, the perfect way to set it up because you really do kind of get a glimpse of each of their characters mm -hmm. in just the short conversation. And so the introducing of all the characters is really, is done very well. Um, because, like, as the people show up, you kind of get, like, the snippets of their conversations. Yeah. Talking to each other. Well, except for the old couple. You don't get full conversations mm -hmm. per group, like, each couple or group. Um, but you get, you hear just enough of all the conversations to form a full picture of who they all are. Yeah, and it's great. Mm -hmm. Um. And it's a great way, because the cast is essentially excluding so just of the patrons there's yeah. 12 of them yeah so it's a really great fast way to just introduce 12 people who they are what they're like what their personality is mm -hmm. without spending an excessive amount of time on it yeah because like could you imagine 
No. If they keep, if they keep, <laughs> I would have been so worried. Just like, please stop introducing this character. Yeah, if me. they, well, so Suicide Squad had a really big um, cast. And I, they, if even if they had, for Suicide Squad, cut that down to like five minutes per person just to introduce them, hmm. it still would have been a good portion of that film. As it is, I think it's like, yeah. it's almost like half the film. Yeah. That they're introducing that that cast. It's but too with, much. Yeah, but with this <laughs> film, twelve people, it only takes them about maybe fifteen to twenty minutes. And while they're doing all that, they're setting up so many other aspects of the film. Yeah, that it doesn't feel like they just are continually trying to introduce who all these people yeah. are. Because when they enter the boat, the old couple just gets on immediately. They don't interact with anybody and they aren't even talking to each other, which in itself is kind of its own thing because of them not talking to anybody or immediately kind of like, okay, so they're going to be kind of standoffish. Yeah. Um, I think the first people we see after or we get a glimpse of is um, Margot or after Margot and Tyler is the rich guys, the rich yeah, tech guys. The nice bros. I hate them so much. <laughs> As they get on the boat, they're already like being kind of rowdy. Like, yeah, it's not even a client dinner. Like, we're gonna pay so much for it. Yeah, which is like, Jesus, shut up. And then I think Tyler even makes a comment where he's like, like, oh great, like they're here for like a show and a fun mm-hmm. time. Like they're not here to appreciate uh, this like amazing food. Mm-hmm. Um. I like how he assumes Margot is going to be appreciative of the food, despite the fact that she's just checked out. <laughs> it's funny because, yeah, he assumes like that they're on the same page, even though every five seconds after anything about the food or like eating it, he like immediately stops to explain to her yeah. how the food works. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, you don't understand. It's because of this that it's so good. And she's like, really? He's like, yes. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he's the film bro of food. Um, that is the perfect way to describe him. Oh man, like literally the scene with the bread when he goes, "It's a concept. You don't get it." And okay. she's like, "I understand that it's a concept. I just think it's stupid." Yeah, exactly. I was like, "Oh my god, amazing!" Um, but yeah, so we have the the rich tech bros. Um, just already being a norm annoying uh the food critics walk in and they're just saying really big words that mean absolutely nothing which i think is funny <laughs> and then tyler notices and he's like oh my god those are like some great food critics and she's like oh wow it's so interesting yeah. um and then they're on the boat now and uh the movie star walks in with his assistant I know, I said, like, assistant slash manager. <laughs> I wasn't sure what role she actually played. I feel like it was his assistant just because she, when she tried to, like, hand over all of, like, his house keys. Yeah, I was stuff, like, why do you have all of these things? Yeah, that felt more like an assistant who, like, helps manage his life and not, yeah. like, a manager or an agent. Yeah, I wasn't, I, like, legitimately was unsure. I was like, maybe she does both. So I just put both down. Um... But she, so they both walk in. He makes, he mimics a pirate voice and <laughs> says like, oh boy, me hearties. And everyone just kind of looks at him and they're like, and he's like, get it? Because it's a boat. And they're just like, yeah, we know we're on a boat. Too. And he's like, okay, geez, I was just trying to like have fun or whatever. <laughs> um, and then I think they sit down and... This is, like, one of the first, like, foods that they eat. Right? Is the oyster. The, the oyster, yeah. And, like, she just kind of eats it, and he, like, immediately goes, like, oh, my God, it's laughable. It's just so good. Like, I can't even believe Like, it's it's insane. It's just absolutely, like, I can't. Mm-hmm. And then he explains and uses the word mouthfeel, and she's like, please don't use the word mouthfeel. It's a disgusting word. And he goes, mouthfeel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is a disgusting word, I agree. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this is basically, I think when 
Oh yeah, as that's happening, like right as they're getting, they're being given their oysters. Um, the tech bros are talking about the movies there, and they're like, "OMG, it's an actual famous person." They're like, "Really, an FP?" And they're like, "Well, kinda. He's less F, more P. He was more F in the like nineties or something, like yeah. nineteen eighty nine." And they're like, hey, it's still a person that is, like, more famous than you. And they're just arguing <laughs> with each other. And I don't know why they use the term FP. Like, I it is in the I, script. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, that's so stupid the way they have to. Yeah. But, I, but, like, at the same time, like, I feel like that's exactly something that. It is. It is. Guys would say that. Oh, God. Let's back to that character, George, the actor, mm-hmm. was originally supposed to be played by Daniel Radcliffe. And the movie that they were going to reference was going to be I, Frankenstein. Yeah, so then they eat the thing. He's annoying about it. She's like, okay, fun. Uh, and then they finally get off the boat. Mm-hmm. And they're, like, going through their checklist. And then they, we, like, this is when we, the audience, first learned that Margot's not originally on the guest list. Like, it was supposed to be somebody else. And they're like, hello, and you are. And she's like, oh, I'm Margot. And they're like, Margo who? And she's like, Margo? <laughs> and they're like, okay, so you're not Mrs. Westerveld? And she's like, no. And they're like, okay, you'll just take over Mrs. Westerveld's like, seat then. And she's like, okay. <laughs> I don't know why that was such a big deal, but okay. Yeah. Which, of course, kind of like leads into the tension of like, why is that so important? Because it shouldn't really be, but for the specific dinner, it is. Well, and it, it further explains this the dynamic between Margot and Tyler and, like, why they are um, so, like, separated from each other despite physically being together. Yeah. Because now you're kind of, like, my, my impression from that was, like, oh, they must be, like, a newer couple. Yeah. And, like, obviously this was something he wanted to do before. And now that they're dating, like, she's kind of like, oh, I have to go because he was going to do it. Like, almost like a pity thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I'm trying to support you and your interests type of thing. Yeah, like, oh, we'll get to know each other on this trip. Which... Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well. um, yeah, so they get off the boat. They're given the tour. Um, there's a lot of things about the tour just in general where I think it's really fun because of how outrageous everything is, juxtaposed with mm-hmm. everyone reacting to how outrageous it is. Yeah. So, like, some people are like, oh, my God, this is crazy. You're joking, right? And then other people are like, this is absolutely, like, essential Mm -hmm. to how great these people are at making food and being dedicated to their craft. Yeah. How all artists must suffer, despite the fact that they're, like, literally walking around essentially a prison (laughs) and just being like, oh, my gosh, this is so amazing. This is so (laughs) Like, the shot where she literally says, like, we she says something about like the green like agriculture and the shot as she's saying it is just the dead trees in the ocean yeah i was like that is absolutely hilarious she takes him to the smokehouse oh yeah the nordic smokehouse and is like this is where we cure our meat for specifically a certain number of days i think it's like 354 oh i was gonna say 186 but uh, an insane amount of time (laughs) yeah Yeah. and then the guy's like oh what would happen if it was like age one day later than it's supposed to yeah 53 and she goes He's like, would it be like the end of the world or something? Like joking, like mocking her in her trade. To which she responds, and honestly, a very, like, I would say acceptable yeah. reaction would to well, be, it's like, this is my trade and you're making fun of me to my face, so I'm yeah. going to be very uncomfy to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, she says, like, I'm a motorcycle. Um, she says, well, if we were to feed this food to a person a day earlier, that would be some of the, like, a day later. Uh, then essentially, yeah. like, the bacteria would get into the spinal fluid and kill the person. <laughs> like a bunch of yeah. dead within a few hours. So, yes, it would be, like, the end of the world. And they're just like, okay. <laughs> and other people are kind of laughing at their expense, which I think is fun. Um, so yeah, and then I think they show them, like, the living quarters, and they're like, oh my god, you live here, 
I'm like, yes, we live here. And he goes, do you, <laughs> do you ever get burned out? And she's like, I'm sorry, burned out? And he's like, yeah, like, just tired of doing the same thing every day. And she's like, we never burn anything unless it's by design to make delicious. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which is a nice, it's actually a nice foreshadowing, too, for what happens at the end of the film. Exactly. I was like, I love that. Um. <laughs> And then, so yeah, they do all of the, like, tour of all of the facilities, and they finally make it to the dining room. They have their assigned seats, and then, um, I love that, like, as they show, like, they introduce you to, like, the kitchen, and, like, the chefs all doing their thing. It's very, like, Food Network cinematography, which I just thought was absolutely funny, because regardless of what the course is and how absurd it gets, they continue throughout the film oh, yeah. to just insert like really cinematic shots of like the food <laughs> and the plating <laughs> it was so funny um so yeah that's all happening uh and then she basically says like we do have a rule though you're not allowed to photograph any of the dishes um i think uh tyler walks up which ends up being referenced later Tyler, he walks up and he walks up to the, I think, Jeremy guy and goes like, oh, is, are you using a Papa jet? And the guy's like, yes, you really know your stuff, Mr. So-and-so. And he's like, oh my God, he knows my name, like amazing. And he's also like super proud of himself because he's like, it's a Papa jet and I need that. And he's like, wow, they really know their stuff. And they sit down and Marco's like, I noticed you didn't bother to ask him his name. And he's like, he literally just waves it off. Yeah. Like, with his hand. Like, physically waves it off. Yeah. <laughs> he's just like, bro, he's so, he's so rude. And then, right after waving her, waving that off, he says, shh, the chef is here. He literally shushes her, and she isn't even saying anything. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> the first time I watched it, I was like, what the hell? Like, why did he, and I was like, why is nobody reacting to this? And I was Considering, like, like, I immediately was like, excuse me, did he just fucking shush her? <laughs> yeah. Which is funny because it doesn't come on until, like, a lot later in the film. Well, maybe, like, halfway through the film until, like, anybody's like, oh my god, what did you just say to me? Like, oh, uh, yeah. And I was like, okay, so he just fucking shushed her. And, like, the chef isn't even, like, in the dining room. He's just in the kitchen doing his job and he's like oh my god this man is absolutely amazing i realize him i've seen every single one of his episodes on like this food cooking show and i've watched that show itself like 20 million times but then i watched the episode and you live in that Mm -hmm. you're crazy um he's an obsessive fanboy yeah i'm like how many directors have that exact fan base that i can think of off the top of my head Oh, Tarantino. James Cameron. Spielberg. Spielberg. <laughs> Pretty much just like the top 10 directors. Christopher Nolan. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. We're all just like every woman is just sitting there like, oh yeah, we know this guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <sighs> We know him for different reasons. Yeah, for reasons that we, he would not, well, he probably would think it's a great thing to be recognized for that. I'm just like, you're actually so stupid. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, and then they pretty much just go around the table. I'm going to kind of breeze under this part because we've kind of already seen a little bit of it with um, like the beginning part of the film. Where they're just doing a little bit more of, like, character introductions and giving them depth and stuff. Yeah, so you essentially see why each table is its own specific breed of asshole. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, except for the old couple. You really don't get anything until a little bit later. Uh, because the old she's just, like, staring. And, the, and she's like, oh, that's my first like, oh, Yeah, the lady that's by herself. herself. Yeah. Um, yeah, so all that happens. Uh, they get their first course, <laughs> which is, like, a rock and some fish on top of it, and mm-hmm. a scallop. No, the first course is the, with the melons and the seaweed on top, which oh, I think is, like, snow. yeah. Yes. 
it's the snow. And then the food critic goes like, oh, the obsession with snow, like nobody's immune, this trend is taking over. Stupid. <laughs> I was like, okay, like they eat snow, they're all like, oh yeah, it's really good. I don't mind eating it. And then they get the second course, the which scallop. is the ocean. Yeah. These are the exact scallops that we, uh, he was mining earlier, or that guy was mining out earlier. Yes, you're right. It is. And he's all super proud of himself, Tyler. Tyler, yeah. He's like, oh, see, I, I recognize that these are the same scallops. Despite the fact that they literally said that during the tour of the island. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were like, okay. Um, scallops, which will be, uh, what is it, flavored as the frozen sea water melts. Something like that. Up with the yeah. rock. He's like, we are literally eating the ocean yeah yeah very a very pretentious way of saying these are fresh scallops yeah he's like it's literally like and i think he says something to margo about um like he's playing with the life and death and the very ecosystem that we all live in (laughs) so speaking of ecosystems though okay so like they're they're on this supposedly remote island, but they don't tell you where that island is. Yeah. Um, and my first thought when they were harvesting those scallops is like, if they're near a big city, and if the island is close enough to that big city, mm-hmm. then they're just eating a bunch of pollution. Because like, if if you live near a big city that has a bay you'll see people, like, fishing in the bay a lot. But no one eats those fish because they're all full of, like, gasoline from boats and stuff. Yeah. Or trash that people are just, like, throwing into the ocean or that get, like, swept into the ocean. Yeah. Like, like... It's like, you can, but, like... And, I mean, there's even laws against, like, eating certain fish because of, like, environmental issues, too. Like, yeah. No, you can fish, but after you catch it, you have to throw it back. Uh-huh. Um, I I don't know if that's so much for health reasons though. But no, it's for like the fish because they're like, oh, this fish is going extinct. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so when they when so when they were talking about eating like the fresh scallops, my brain was just like, that sounds absolutely disgusting and like it's full of pollution. (laughs) Well, I mean, those ones probably aren't because they're remote yeah recording. yeah i mean this is such a disbelief you know it is a clean area of the ocean mm-hmm. but yeah and he's like he makes this ridiculous absurd like and she's like oh it's very well put and he's like stop like don't don't say that like no not really <laughs> she's like yeah no it, it is i forgot he started crying yeah talking about it He's like, it's all just so moving. It's so beautiful. That's so funny. That was, I didn't like that scene. Like, I understand why they put it in there. I was like, this man. Yeah. It was just, it was too cringy for me. <laughs> so stupid. Um, and then Lillian being like, oh, it's very thalassic and the guy's like thalassic and they're like yeah like oceanic thalassa was the greek primeval spirit of the sea Mm -hmm. so we're eating the ocean we are eating the ocean yes (laughs) yeah (laughs) and you're just like even just this you're like wow these guys are really got their heads up their butts (laughs) (laughs) like are they just making this up as they go because it's so funny and then we finally get the the old couple where she's like, oh, I saw Perry at somewhere the other day. And she goes like, oh, how, how was he? Oh, you know, Perry. And the like such a boring conversation. Like very much the light of their romance has died. Mm-hmm. Uh, the tech bros are being douchey about the food. They're like, oh, yeah, some plants. Wonderful. We love, we love eating like an otter. <laughs> this is great. Um, yeah. It's the whole like, oh, if I'm a dick, then I'll be cool. And I want people to think I'm I'm cool, so I need to be as big of a dick as possible type of feeling. Yeah. Oh, and we also find out the movie star and um his assistant, I think. Um 
like their whole thing is like like he's like oh i know the chef personally like we're friends which is why she thinks they're there and i guess he's auditioning for like his own travel like food mm-hmm. show and so she's like okay so like give it to me your best reaction he's like it's not rocket science like it's just food he goes like mm, it's really good and she's like really you gotta be you gotta give me something more than that and he's like he basically ex- explains what happens to a lot of actors where they like go on the trip and it's like oh we're super worldly because we've been all around the world and i'm gonna give this like very orgasmic like noise as to how great this food is and then like i don't know we'll go to south africa and we'll talk about racism and then i'll come back and i'll have an oscar or an emmy or something yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was like lol unfortunately that is very true mm-hmm. as to how often that happens um so yeah that's kind of like that's what i want to say that's the first 30 minutes of the movie essentially yeah because then you get the bread which is the second course but the turning point like the first main turning point of the film yes and so the chef explains like the bread and grain and how it's the food of the common man um and basically says, like, but everyone in this room, like, none of them are common. Like, you guys aren't common men, so you don't get bread. <laughs> yeah. You will be eating this, what is it? Essentially, like, the dippings. Yeah, the savory yeah. eating. It's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so stupid. And then Margot kind of, like, she ends up um, essentially calling out the chef. And just being like, this is too pretentious, like, give us real food type of thing. Yeah. Um, so which kind of tips him off to the point that he's like, okay, this girl is absolutely not one of them. Like, yeah. everybody else that is at this table, just forgive my pun, eating this up. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a foreshadowing of, um, of... <laughs> I think he called it the givers and the takers. Yeah, or like you're an eater. Yeah. Um, but so for me, for this scene, the reason that this scene kind of like makes or breaks the movie, and depending on depending on how you understand this scene, yeah, is um, like so it's a deconstructed bread plate, right? Without the bread, um, and he, I believe he tries to reference it later on. But um, his whole thing is just, like, if you continue to deconstruct everything, if you don't appreciate it, if you just take it for, like, these little parts yeah. and you use it as, like, a status symbol, then you're not going to be able to enjoy it because you've just picked it apart so much that there's nothing left to enjoy. <laughs> yeah. And so it's his criticism <laughs> on, you know, food in general and, like, an art versus the consu- artist uh, and their art versus the consumer yeah, and where you get the joy of it. Um, but then. For me, this movie, like, circles back around to that scene. Yeah. Because they're so... And, like, so that is... That right there, that whole, like, artist and art versus consumer Mm -hmm. is kind of, like, the first major theme of the movie. Yeah. Um, But then for me, because there are so many other themes and, like, they kind of are more subtle in ways, um, depending on the theme... um, Uh If you, like, if you don't rewatch this movie and you don't deconstruct it, I don't think that you can enjoy this movie as much as you should. And that feels like it's the opposite of what this scene is trying to say. Interesting. Because this is one of those moments where I was like, isn't this obvious? Like, how did people skip over this? No, so like I said, like that, so that, so that right there is, that's one of the on the nose themes, right? The first major theme. Yeah. But it's the going back, rewatching, dissecting, and deconstructing the whole film, I think is what, uh, what would make it a better film. Because, oh, yeah, deconstructing yeah. it does make it better. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah, yeah. is saying if you do that, then you're not enjoying it. Or, like, don't do that to the point that you don't enjoy it anymore. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it is, like, a better film. But, like, I wouldn't do it again, you know? You wouldn't watch it again? 
Well, like I wouldn't deconstruct it like this again. Oh, I don't go through scene by scene. Oh no. I mean, I think if you, I think one watch through. Yeah. And only deconstruct it. it. Yeah. Well, (laughs) once in theaters and second, because I was like, oh, I have to take notes for the podcast. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I think, I think it is a good film to rewatch and to deconstruct. But I think if you were to do that, I suppose with every movie, yeah, yeah. then you would lose appreciation. And it's even funny, the reaction that everybody has to it, the scene of it with the bread, because like, like Margaret's like, what is this? Like, this is a joke, right? And he's like, oh, oh my God, it's salt. absolutely like, it's, it's so, no, like you don't get it. He goes, she goes, wait, you actually like this? He's basically insulting you. Yeah. <laughs> Which is absolutely what's happening. And he goes, no, you don't get it. it, it it's a concept. So which I wrote in my notes, said every film bro ever. Yeah. <laughs> and then each table kind of discusses um, their kind of, like, thing. Like, the movie star table is kind of like, okay, there's no bread. Which is really funny, considering they're really known for their bread. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the food critic table, she's like, oh, I, I make my own bread. Like, oh, like using what? And she goes, Well, I make the yeast out of my, like apples from my orchard. It's just like, literally, lady, shut up. He goes, like, Of course, you would make the apple, like the yeast from your own apples. Yeah. So dedicated of you. So that table also talked about the broken emulsion. Yeah. I didn't get that. I, I didn't either. I was like, Okay, so she's like really being nitpicky. Even she somehow found something to pick apart in the absence of the meal yeah so she's like oh the broken emulsion to which he hears it it's like seriously she's gonna criticize even to that point like the, so the only thing i can think of with that mm-hmm. was it was supposed to be a broken emulsion and that's why he gave her like the giant dish specifically of a broken emulsion <laughs> I have no idea what the freaking emulsion is. Like, yeah. So emulsion is it matters. It's broken. Your well, okay. So short story is you have things like um, oil and vinegar, right? And yeah, they're not they're supposed like, to mix. Yeah. An emulsion has like a third ingredient that allows them to mix. And so by having it broken, it wasn't correctly okay. mixed. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a broken <laughs> Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, I just took it as like a wow, even in the absence of an actual thing to criticize, you somehow found something to criticize to make yourself feel useful. So, I like your take better. Not that I had a take, <laughs> so I didn't understand. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, so she, she really hates that broken emotion so much. Let me just keep her some more. Yeah, just to be petty. I like, I like that take. Kind of like the thing of like, oh, did they spit in it? It's like, well, I can now. Mm-hmm. You want me to? <laughs> like, kind of a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Which I don't know if that was the point or not, but that's just what I, what I thought. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, and everyone's kind of like, dang, there's no bread. That's so sad. And then you get to the tech bros table, and they're like, hey. Like, we get that this is, like, the whole thing. But, like, we're really hungry. Could you just give us some bread? Like, make an exception for us. And she's like, no. And he goes, okay, I'm going to have to pull this card. But, like, do you know who we are? And she goes, yes. <laughs> and they're like, and you know who we are. And she's like, yes. And they're like, and you know who we... You, so, you know, we work with Varric. And they name drop the guy that owns, financially owns the island and the restaurant. And she goes, you were for Mr. Varick. And they're like, same difference, lady. Give us the bread and, like, he won't have to find out about this. We'll have you shut down in the morning. And she's like, that won't be necessary. (laughs) And she just, like, (laughs) she's going to leave. But then she's like, oh, here, I'll fix your napkin for you. And she leans next to um, the guy that tries to break the window later. Mm -hmm. I forget their names. They're just one cohesive. Yeah. I have all three of their names. I just, I don't know who's who. It's Soren, Dave, and Bryce. <laughs> of course <laughs> Yeah, so Soren, Dave, or Bryce, uh, she leans next to him <laughs> and whispers in his ear, you'll eat 
less than you desire, but more than you'll deserve, than you deserve, which is just, like, incredibly off-putting. And he's like, what the fuck does that mean? And so now we're kind of at that stage of, like, okay, so this movie, like, something is going on here. We just aren't quite sure what it is yet. Um, Which then leads us into the third course, which is... (laughs) Is honestly hysterical to me but really kind of solidifies the point that like oh, okay so this is definitely like a dinner but threatening <laughs> because they quite literally serve them their the chicken tacos yeah yeah With the tortillas they quite literally serve them they're like oh i totally downfalls. forgot about the tortillas. I'm not gonna lie. I I forgot about it too. Also, I don't know if anybody else knows, but he continuously gives stories about him growing up. But like, I'm not sure all of them are completely true. Because he's like, oh yes, when I was growing up in this place, and when I was growing up in this place, and I'm like, there's no way. Like this timeline doesn't make sense. I I, I didn't question that at all because the way that it made it. St- the way that the story ended up playing out for me was he grew up very poor and it was like a rags to riches type of story. Yeah. Um, especially considering he he started on like a roadside burger flipping place. Yeah, and I was like, I hate it. I hate everything about cooking and what it has become. Yeah. And I'm gonna not only murder myself and the monster I've become because of how meticulous I've been this whole time, but also every single person that was critical into making this mm-hmm. monster that I am today. Third course. Memory. Oh yeah, so we find out that the lady sitting by herself at the table is his mom. Mm-hmm. And she is pretty much drunk the whole night. <laughs> yeah. Um, he goes like, oh, I hope that this will evoke your memory. And then serves them the tortillas. And each table has something to do with like the reason of them being there. Yeah. So now that we know who that lady is and kind of like the re- reason why she's there, um, I think this is when we kind of get a fuller grasp of one of the, like, for me, was a more subtle theme, which is that each of the tables represents um, a different deadly sin. Because mm. you've got greed with the, uh, tech bros, and then you've got gluttony with Tyler being, like, the fanboy who just, like, can't wait to try this food and has to have the food. And then you've got Lust with Richard, the old man and the couple, who is cheating. Yes, and that's the first time that the wife finds out about it. Yeah. And then you've got Envy with the um, washed-up actor who's name-dropping everyone, and, you know, he wants to be more, and he's trying to get his name back into the limelight. Yeah. Then you've got Pride with um, the food critic. Oh, yeah. Uh, L- L- Lillian and Ted. And she she thinks, you know, that this is all done for her. And it's a whole... Okay, I'm, I am... Slightly, this is all done for our benefit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, jumping ahead slightly. We'll come to it. But mm-hmm. she me- she mentions that this whole thing is a show yeah. just for them. Which is insane. Yeah. And then you've got the mom who's sloth. Because she just sat back and let, you know, the abuse of dad be an abuse of dad. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, instead of having it as a table, um, but it's uh, Chef Chef Slowick and I guess all the rest of his chefs are all wrath Mm -hmm. because they end up um, having a fun little surprise (laughs) for everyone at the end. Yeah, like the whole thing even is like wrapped around their own wrath yeah 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 so you kind of see every table and then you come back to tyler's table and um oh yeah this is when she finally like reacts to everything he's being a dick about because she goes like oh dude like tyler if you don't like it he's like oh these are just pictures of me i shouldn't have done it like he probably thinks i'm like a horrible person now i have to do something and get back in his good grace and she's like dude literally like if you don't like the food just send it back And so she's about to go and send it back. She, like, raises her hand. And then he, like, snaps at her. He goes, 
Yeah. And she goes, did you just fucking snap at me? Yeah, that pissed me off. It pissed me off, too. I was like, I said the exact thing that she said. Mm-hmm. And, like, at the same time. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, oh. Um, and then he's like, yeah, I did. Like, because you're being a child right now. And she goes, what did you just call me? And he goes, like, a child. Because that's what you're acting like. Yeah. And then she's like, you need to apologize to me right now and then he says something about like you're being a child um something about like it shouldn't even matter because or like you need to be acting better uh like i brought you here this is well, okay for this yeah for this. so like you know shut up and eat and she's like you need to apologize to me right now um so she slapped him at this point she slaps him after. She slaps him after uh, Chef Slowick pulls her into the kitchen for the first time. Mm-hmm. So she goes off to the bathroom. She literally is trying to escape through a window. <laughs> yeah. And the chef walks in. I, yeah, so I, I honestly, first watch, I agreed. She was trying to escape through it, but then she's also trying to smoke. Yeah, the second <laughs> time, I, I don't know to be honest. I honestly don't know if she was trying to escape or if she was just trying to open it for a smoke break. He walks in and is like, "Okay, seriously, they're like, who are you?" And she's like, "Literally, my name is Margot." And he's like, "You're not supposed to be here." Which essentially is just like what. The third time now that we're just like, why is it so important that she's yeah. like here instead of this other person? The build up of <laughs> something being wrong. And so now we're just kind of like, okay, for sure this is odd. I'm like, why is he obsessed with her? And then he's like, like you're not eating any of the food. She's like, I'm not really that hungry. He's like, so you say like, why are you here? Like. Like, what is it about you that makes you, like, not want to eat it and, like, all of that stuff? And so now we're literally only 40 minutes into the movie. Mm-hmm. I checked the time. Um, which is when they introduce the fourth course, The Mess. Yeah. Which is shocking for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so The Mess, he brings up his uh, his chef, Jeremy, and essentially is, like, Jeremy has wanted his entire life to be a chef, and now he's a chef, and he hates his life, which is very similar to me. And he goes, would you want my life? He's like, no. (laughs) And then he basically allows him to complete his meal, um, and he essentially is like, well, Jeremy, I'm sorry that it has to come to this, because, like, essentially the idea that, like, greatness is, like, a concept, like, it can't actually ever be reached. It's just something that we make up to strive for. But you can't actually ever reach greatness if it keeps getting farther and farther away from you as you get closer and closer to it. So, like, Jeremy, I hate to say it, but, like, you'll you'll never be great. None of us will. Um, and because of that, Jeremy has presented this meal, The Mess. Which I think is kind of... <laughs> I thought it was... I thought it was funny. That they put down the, the, like, char... Like, not for his body, but I think it was funny that they put down, like, garnish and, like, herbs, like, on the tarp. Did they? Yeah. Like, they put, like, rosemary. <laughs> I, the only thing I remember is they put the tarp up, and then you understood, like, why it was there. hmm Because... He he blew his brains out. Yeah. Um, and they didn't want the blood, you know, getting back to the kitchen on the food. And my whole thought process was like, okay, I understand that they protected the kitchen and the food, but there's still blood on the ground, and that still seems unsanitary. Well, no, because they had a tarp underneath him staying again. So when his body fell, he yeah. fell on top of the garnishes, and it was part of the plating. <laughs> I feel I honestly feel like I must have watched a different scene not that I did but the way that I remember it it was not that way <laughs> it was like that's so messed up 
but so funny. Yeah. Because they're like the mess. R.I.P. Jim Rodin. Yeah. <laughs> the little, like little card that comes up. Mm-hmm. Um. And then of course they give you actual food, which is like mm-hmm. meat and bones and potatoes and carrots and mm-hmm. like a beef dish or something, whatever. I don't want to pronounce it. J O U S. And they're like, wow, this is like really good. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course there's people that are like, my God, this man just killed himself. Like mm-hmm. they're screaming and crying, throwing up. Um, and then I think at this point, this is when the food critic Lillian. Is she just like, starts laughing. Yeah, because she's like, oh, it's just a show. This is all for us. Like, this isn't real. Yeah, and she's like, this is absolutely spectacular theater. Yeah. And people are like, I don't know, I don't know lady. This man just, like, shot himself. Like, his brains are right there. Like, we yeah. just have to look at this. They, yeah, he's got a squid behind his head or something like that. Yeah, they're like, maybe he's like a little pet. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, And then this is kind of when we find out that, like, they're all also stuck there. Like, nobody can mm-hmm. leave. Because I think the old man's like, I'm going to leave and get help. The man that's cheating on his wife. But the wife has just now maybe found out about. Maybe has it solidified. Uh, but as he tries to leave, he says he's going to handle it with his own hands. Which is stupid. Elsa goes, okay, well, which hand then? Or shall we choose for you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> she looks at Shap Shap, nods, and she goes, okay, the left hand, ring finger. And then they just cut his finger off. Yeah. Which is symbolic because he was a cheater and they cut off the finger with, with the, the ring. ring on it. And then they give the ring back to the wife. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like crying, screaming on the ground. And now everyone's like really scared. They're like, we'll do exactly what we're told. This is crazy. Oh my god, what did we just sign up for? Mm-hmm. Um, and then after this point, Chef calls Margot into the kitchen uh, to find out who she is. And is like, are you with us or are you with them? And she's like, what? <laughs> and he's like, are you an eater or a taker? Um, like, everything about this night has been meticulously planned, and you were not part of this plan, so you have to just, you have 15 minutes to decide, are you with them or are you with us? Um, and this is when we, the audience, find out everyone's going to die tonight. So then she walks back and slaps Tyler on the face. Um. I th- I don't get the line are you with us or are you with them or are you with us because like at first like right at that moment you kind of like get the idea that like something really sinister is gonna, gonna going to go on that you know not everybody not every guest is probably gonna make it out of this alive mm-hmm. and the best people to be with are gonna be the chefs oh, right well, he, she even says like she says something about, like, oh, this is arbitrary. Yeah. And then he's like, nothing is arbitrary. Either you are like, what is it? He says, you can either die with those who give or die with those that take. Uh, okay. And then she, like, walks off because he's like, your timer started. And then she slaps Tyler. And we're like, yeah, valid. Okay. I just- At this point, we're assuming that nobody else knows that they're going to die. Okay. Like, it's only Margot and us that know that yeah. at this moment. I guess I agree with Margot. With just the point that, like, why does it matter? Because, like, if everyone's going to die, like, it doesn't matter who I'm dying with. Yeah, she's like, it doesn't, like, this isn't fair. That doesn't yeah. make any sense. And then, but that kind of sets up the, like, next time that they have the conversation and... Like, when she storms off after physically attacking Tyler, which is a separate scene. Yeah. <laughs> um, because we get... We get man's folly. And then we get... Uh, Tyler's bullshit. <laughs> man's folly. Oh, man's folly is... Man's folly is when... The other sous chef. Yeah. Um, Wait, like, hold on. I'm dumb. I'm off. She slaps Tyler. They have their cleansing tea. Oh, right. They have the cleansing tea with the bergamot. To which Tyler's like, is there bergamot in this? And he's like, yes, there is bergamot in this. Like, way to go. You picked it up. He did that so condescendingly. Like, it was you so funny. I just hate it. Just having to 
I said Tyler literally what the fuck yeah um yeah and then he offers to everyone like oh like does anybody have any questions so far and I think the sunshine guy gets up and is like why am I here and this is no this is not that part actually just kidding um they all ask their questions and he basically explains that like everybody there is like pretentious and greedy Mm -hmm. um and then he kind of explains like oh yeah like my restaurant essentially is part of the problem because like we just keep catering to people like you which is what keeps us in business and like keeps us going round and round he says yeah like it's my restaurant he goes well i guess it's technically not my restaurant because Varric actually owns the restaurant and then he presents Varric hanging in his angel wings mm-hmm. above the water. Their, the water. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, fuck you. Like, this guy has, like, given you everything. He kept you up in COVID. Like, how dare you treat, like, your benefactor like this? And he goes, hmm, well, maybe because it is actually my restaurant since I'm the one that puts in all the work and the effort and is the one that dedicates my life literally down to like how i eat how i sleep how i do everything um and then he drowns <laughs> they drown him <laughs> and everyone has to watch um and literally right after that happens the timer goes off and it's time for margo to tell the chef her decision so they go and they meet in his office and this is where we find out that the chef is like I, I knew from the start that you weren't one of them because, mm-hmm. like, you were questioning things. You were like, this is an insult to these people. Like, you, you picked up on it. And so because of that, I knew that you weren't, like, a taker. You must be, like, a giver. And so if you are a giver, like, what was your, like, you must work in, like, a service position. Like, what is your service? And we find out that she's basically an escort and that she... Like, knows Richard. She knows yeah. Richard, the cheating guy, and that's why they've kind of been exchanging glances. And he's like, why do you keep, like, looking at him? Like, what is it about him that makes you uncomfortable? And she's like, well, I wasn't expecting to see him here. Like, obviously. And then also tells a part that, like, she, you know, is just, like, taken advantage of a lot. And that in that specific circumstance, she says that he basically told her to, like, maintain eye contact and tell him how gritty is while he jerked off. But then the part that got her was that he wanted her to love, to tell him, like, he loved her and was proud of, or that she loved him and was proud of him and that she would go by his daughter's name. Just put yeah. that up. Yeah. Which makes me think that, like, maybe the mom's like, oh, wow, she looks like her Claire, like, and, like, I'm now thinking that Claire's, like, dead. Yeah, I kind of got that feeling when, uh, the mom first mentioned, like, oh, she looks like our daughter. Mm -hmm. Just kind of, like, from her tone. Yeah. But I also didn't really think too much on it, because it didn't seem to affect I was like, she's either dead or, like a strange show part where she, like, doesn't talk to them anymore. Yeah. It's, like, not in their life. Only because she's so, like, off put, but she's nothing like her clear. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. Shut up, lady. Yeah, but now we find out the uncomfortableness came from the fact that he was seeing her while she pretended to be his daughter. Yeah. And that he's seen other women yeah. and probably did the same to them, too. Yeah. Hence the woman in the picture. And probably also took advantage of his daughter. Yeah. Appropriate ways. Probably. Um, and so they kind of bond over this, like, we both work in a service position. Like, do you like what you, like, serve, I think, is the... Is the do you like what you do? Yeah. He uses some terms. I can't remember what it is, but it's, like, basically, like, do you like the service that you provide, or do you like doing that? And she's like, oh, I used to, but, like, not so much anymore. Like, I just do it because I have to survive. And that's kind of, like, the understanding of, he's like, yeah, I don't like doing what I do Mm -hmm. anymore either. Mm -hmm. But you're right. Like, I used to like doing it. Yeah. 
Um, and I think that right there created the start of the emotional bond that um, will be coming up later. Yeah. Yeah. Because she really is the only person that would be able to understand what it is that would make him, like, let her live, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Um. Any noises outside? Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, then we come into the room again. And <laughs> do they they make them all go outside? They're like, oh, we're yeah. all going outside. And then, okay, and then they present the meal men's folly or the dish men's folly, which the lady comes up and is like, oh, chef tried to like molest me once, technically twice, twice, yeah. And then because I refused his advantages, um, advantages <laughs> <laughs> because I refused his advantages advances he uh, just decided to pretend I didn't exist and ignored me and didn't talk to me for like six months yeah it's like yeah eight months like a really long time and it's like because he can just do that um yeah <laughs> and so basically she presents this dish that is she gets a little bit of revenge uh, she gets to stab him in the leg with the scissors because mm. that is what he did to his father. Um, and now every man at the table will have to run and hide. And then will be chased by... It's not a chef. It's one of the like, staff members. <laughs> They'll be chased by the staff members. Um, which is just so funny. And then, like, Tyler thinks that he's, like, not one of those guys. He, well, he doesn't want to go because he still wants to be part of this experience. Yeah, he thinks yeah. it's, like, not, like, it doesn't apply to him. And so, yeah. Well, he he's thinks, like, you too. Yeah, he thinks he's the exception to the rule because he actually appreciates the art that the chef is coming out with. Which is kind of, like, equivalent to me of those men that are, like, I can't be against women. Like I'm a, I'm a feminist. Like I have a mother. I have a so sister. I like I it. know a yeah. woman. I appreciate women. Like what does yeah. mean? Not me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. Just Tyler. Yeah. Um. So yeah, then he finally starts running, and then all the women are brought inside for the dish, um, that the creator has made for them. They eat it and they're all like, oh yeah, this is like super good. They're all super uncomfy. And like, okay, maybe we should ask her, like, is she like, are we actually all gonna die tonight? Like, we're not all gonna die. And she's like, actually, that was my idea. And they're all like, oh my god. So, okay. I'm gonna start drinking. Yeah. So I've got like a couple things about this scene. The first thing is I'm surprised that because so I'm assuming she's like the second sous chef um like second I guess third in line because you got the main chef then you had uh Jeremy and now you've got her Mm. um so like I I can understand why he took her you know like thoughts and ideas into advisement and then put them into the menu where you know it was her idea that everyone has to die Mm -hmm. like also Assuming that he just, he did just kind of, like, ignore her and pretend that she wasn't there. Like, why does she now get such a big voice in the menu? Especially considering, like, it's her idea that ends the menu. Well, I think part of this, like, menu is part of him, like, like paying for his sins, too. Like, he's orchestrated it because he's also going to die at the end of the night. And he admits closer to the end, like, oh, I'm a monster. I was a monster. And, like, you know, like, circumstances made me this way. But, like, I'm not excluded from having been a monster to other people. And so I think, like, part of it is, like... Reparation. Yeah, kind of like reparations, paying his dues, kind of, like, cleaning it all up before he, like, dies for okay. the final, like, process. Because the fire at the end is, like, a period. That's the thing. 
So I think that's why she gets this is because he knows he wronged her and is like, I have to make up for that or not like make up for it, but I have to do something because that's part of like why I hate myself so much. Okay. Um, the second thing about this scene is the second time I watched this movie is it's like if you exclude like the oysters at the very beginning um you kind of see and this is just kind of it I don't think it has anything to do with like the theme of the movie I think it's just kind of like a fun um choice that they used um because they did use a real life chef to like create these dishes and these you know themes and stuff it wasn't just kind of like something that the the uh screenwriter came up with um do you remember what her dish was, like the food that they ate? To be honest, I don't know if there was one, aside from what the well, because the women eat. Do they? Yeah, they eat something because they're all like, "Oh, it's like it's good, it's really good." Like, yeah, you did a great job here. Like they're just trying not to die, but yeah. like, it is like a thing. Uh, I kind of remember. I just can't that they did eat something. I I don't know what it was. But if you look at the themes, kind of, of all the food, you've got that first dish, the uh, that snow dish with the melon. And, like, for me, like, that's, like, the first beginning stages of life, right? You've got, like, like these little, um, I'm like, I don't want to call them bacteria, but you've got, like, these, like, small, tiny little organisms. And then you get the second dish which is like the next step of evolution with the fish and the ocean and the scallop. And then after that, you've got the chicken taco. Mm -hmm. No, sorry, you've got the bread plate. And so like now man can cook. And so like now as man is evolving and cooking, like they make bread first and bread is oh. the <laughs> staple of civilization. Then you've got the chicken taco, which is, you know, now man's palate is expanding even more and you've got meat added into the diet. And from there, you've got the mess, which in the next step of evolution, I'm assuming represents like war and violence and like the start of civilization, maybe. And then finally, you've got um, man's folly. And it's like the, the um, evolution of like morals and ethics. Kind of maybe, like maybe like the finalization of civilization, but it's like nothing that I've thought too hard on. Mostly, that's just me and my toxic trait of writing down incomplete thoughts and trying to run with them. So, but. I thought that's the script for the man's folly section is really interesting because it's very different. Uh, um, so Catherine is the the chef, and then she comes out and she says, "Like, good evening, everyone. I have a story for you all." Three years ago, Julian Floyd tried to fuck me. I refused his advances. A week later, he tried again and again. I refused, but he didn't fire me. That would be unethical, he thought, so he kept me in his kitchen and refused to look me in the eye or speak directly to me for eight months. He can do that because he's the star. He's the man. Uh, Chef Slovic looks away a bit pained, Catherine then says, which means he's he gets to be the dark romantic genius who suffers for his art. A woman chef is a true bird, a go-getter. She's the mother hen. That explains a little bit more about the egg. That the guy gets at the end. Anyway, yeah. um, she's the mother hen. She makes grandma's recipes with a sly modern twist. Isn't that right? Um, I've been groped. I've been leered at, and I've learned, er, and, and I've earned more, but made less, and all of it in the service of men so enraptured with themselves that they don't see their own pointlessness. So let's help them see. Our next dish is called men's folly, which is where she pulls out the scissors and stabs him um and you know they share a hug he apologizes she smiles he smiles back pulls out the scissor or the knife yeah. hilariously it actually says knife but it is scissors because that's what it says 
She stabbed him with. Fun fact, there's a typo. Gotcha. <laughs> or a mistake in the script. <laughs> um, that never happens. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, Cerberus comes away with a tray and takes... Flower. What? Server is there with a tray with a little flower on it to take the scissors away. Okay. And yeah, for the rest of the movie, Chef will have a growing blood stain on his pants and a leg. And so the meal diners, we now offer you the chance to escape. You'll be given 45 seconds head start, to which at that point, members of my staff will try to catch you. And if they do catch you, dot, dot, dot. Because the Soren now has decided to make a break for it and doesn't even wait for the guy to finish. He says, okay, um, before Richard leaves, <laughs> I guess everyone just leaves and he doesn't make that joke, which I think that joke is super funny. I'm like, yeah. Time to share now. But, yeah. So, yeah, there's that actually explains a little bit more of why um, he's given an egg. Uh, but essentially, Catherine takes all the women inside. They all have their seat, and um, they do get a meal. I just can't remember. What, oh, I don't know what that word is. Dungeness? Crab? Fermenting yogurt, dried sea lettuce, and a boshi. Mm -hmm. No, because Felicity calls it. She's in the MVP, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about this one. And like everyone's just kind of eating there, like in silence. They're all like terrified. And then they're like, oh, you know, this is, it's so good, really good, and awkwardly eating it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, yeah, and then Catherine just starts crying. And they're like, should we comfort her? Should we not? Um, we then get shots of all the men getting caught. <laughs> the sous chefs. <laughs> the women are eating, and Catherine finally, like, stops crying. Um, and then this is kind of when they ask her, they're like, are we all going to die? Um, she's like, absolutely. Like, it was my idea. And they're all kind of like, well, fuck. And they all kind of accept their, like, doom state, and then they all just start drinking together. <laughs> and then this is when you find out that Margot is escort, and that she... Oh, she says to yeah. them, like, oh, well, I guess it doesn't matter. She says, like, we're all gonna die anyway, not that it matters, my name is Margot. Yeah. Here. Yeah, so I, the other people know that she's an escort and that she also knows Richard, the cheater. Yeah. Not what they've done together, but that but she knows yeah. him, which implies that she's also an escort. No, right. yeah. so, I tuned into that as well. Uh-huh. But they have their own thing. Um, yeah. And then the men are introduced, or the men just come back and... The guy with Cat, or no, the guy with uh, Lillian, the food critic, wins and gets a fun little egg treat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Now, <laughs> now all the men have come back. Um, they're kind of trying to, like, not be super confused um they're not like confused but they're just like what the fuck is going on but they're also trying not to like aggravate anyone yeah um, and then they all kind of start confessing to each other well the women start confessing to the men because now they know for a fact that they are going to die like like it is in stone written on the wall they're gonna die. Um, Felicity is the assistant slash manager, and she goes like, "Oh, I've been stealing from you." And he's like, 
I wrote a bad a no, bad recommendation no. to Sandy. And she goes, I know you see me on it. Yeah, that was one of my favorite moments of comedy where she's like, I've been stealing from you. And he's like, I know. She's like, I know you know. And then he said, I wrote a bad uh, recommendation to Sony. She's like, I know you cc me on it. So funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, God, it was great. And then the chef uh, comes in and he apologizes to everyone. And he's like, to apologize this wasn't part of the, the of the menu but we were making a slight change i don't normally do this and then he has tyler stand up and go to the front and he's like oh tyler like you're no <laughs> right before that he says the the night wouldn't be complete if i didn't bring this to everybody's attention oh yeah so he calls out tyler and essentially ask Tyler to the questions of like, okay, so you knew for how long that this was gonna, like, this whole night was gonna happen, and like, I asked you to be here, and he's like, oh, do you know why I asked you to be here? He goes, well, like, I knew a lot about food, and you were like, that's impressive, and stuff like that, and he's like, yes, yes, and then like, I swore you to secrecy, he told you, like, you didn't tell anybody, and he's like, yeah, of course, and he goes, so, you knew that everyone was gonna die, but you hired Margo anyway. And he goes, and so now we're all super pissed. I'm like, yes, he did. He even admits that. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, he basically like, Do you know, at this point, has uh, Chef Slowick, has he said anything about no substitutions i think that's said at the very beginning like one of the rules with like the no phones is like we don't offer any substitutions. oh no if it is that's not what i'm talking about there's another point where he like yells it like he gets angry oh yeah very tense says like they're yeah. gonna ask for substitutions even though he knows that there are no substitutions and gotcha that. yeah so and at this point, now he's saying, like, now he's recognizing that there was a substitution, which is Margot mm -hmm. versus Tyler's original date. Yeah. No substitutions, which he pays the price for, because not only does Margot physically attack him after finding out that he quite literally just invited her to die. Yeah. Which is so fucked up. Mm -hmm. Um is essentially like forced to cook a meal for everybody and just be made fun of and then he excuses Tyler and Tyler says yes chef uh, they give you the title card of Tyler's bullshit which is like very raw and cooked meat <laughs> lamb, with leeks yeah. and water and lamb <laughs> yeah because he's trying to make a point where like you know I'm an artist I know everyone says that uh creating essentially creating art or cooking in this case mm -hmm. is really easy and that anybody can do it but like despite how big of a fanboy this guy is yeah he can't do what i do yeah so like he, should he doesn't have any real appreciation for the or, or perspectives and yeah he and he's got a skill having the like knowledge of the stuff so that he can look cool to other people yeah <laughs> yeah so he's just taking in and consuming all of these things about art yeah. but he's not appreciating the skill that goes into it um so therefore like he doesn't actually know yeah anything he doesn't like that. excuses tyler um and then he like looks at uh margo and goes like no you're free um which is something in tyler's ear yeah but we don't hear it yeah. tyler says yes chef and walks up he looks at Margo, now you're free, which is a parallel to when uh, Catherine stabbed Chef and was like, mm -hmm. now I'm free. Yeah. Um, so then he grabs, or like, I guess they all go and sit down again, but then he um, has Elsa go and grab Margo to come back to the kitchen. Uh, He's like, oh, like, there's a barrel, and you should go get it from the smokehouse. 
Yeah, I Elsa didn't grab it or Elsa forgot to grab yeah, it. Elsa forgot to grab it. Yeah. So, so which later in the fight, Elsa's like, there's a there's a I have a theory about that. Yeah. And she's like, Don't replace me. Um and then as Margot's leaving, we see Tyler hanging. Yeah, he's committed suicide. And he's not so yeah. Um, so yeah, Margo is allowed to leave the dining area, um, to which, as that happens, the movie star stands up and is like, well, like, why am I here? Like, I'm just a movie star, I don't even know you, like, this is crazy, like, do I really deserve this? Which honestly gives us another hysterical scene, but honestly, he was so right for this. (laughs) He goes, you were in a movie that was really bad like it was <laughs> one day off <laughs> one day off that i had working for so long and he's like dude i didn't make the movie like i just i was just in it he goes yes but it's your face that i see every time i think of it yeah he's like and your face now and he says is what is what i think of when i think about what happens to an artist who loses his purpose yeah and i think well and not a lot of so a lot of the discourse that i've seen about him being there completely forget about that line yeah i was like that's the line that like yeah is why he's there because in this he sees himself yeah because right you have an artist who cares too much about his craft which the chef and then you have an artist who doesn't care at all about his craft yeah and so they're paralleling each other in opposite ways and he in some way also kind of feels like he's lost the purpose for cooking yeah and like for food and what he started and then because he's a man, he goes, well, what about her? And she goes, he goes, what school did you go to? You go to college? What's college? She goes, Brown. And he goes, student loans? And she says, no. And he goes, I'm sorry, you're dying. Yeah. <laughs> that was another great moment of comedy. Which was just like, you know what? Yeah. Eat the rich. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> like, damn. So many people go to school. <laughs> so much money. And just, like, chilling. Mm-hmm. Nice. Anyway, so then Margot, because she's outside now, has the opportunity to go inside of Chef's quarters and kind of snoop around there. Um, mm-hmm. And Elsa catches her snooping around. They fight, and this is when Elsa says, There wasn't a barrel, you can't replace me. No, he never told me to get the barrel. Um, I would have remembered, I wouldn't have forgotten. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't replace me. And my theory on that, the barrel is that he purposely didn't tell her yeah because he wanted one of the guests um not specifically margo when he was planning it but i think he wanted one of the guests to go get it and then see the radio which margo then uses to call in the coast guard Uh, because then once margo comes back with the barrel shortly after the coast guard shows up and there's a whole scene about like oh he's gonna rescue them like they're safe but then it turns out the coast guard (laughs) yeah and it turns out the coast guard is actually in on the plan too Mm -hmm. and he isn't gonna save anybody i didn't think and i think only because when that all happens he like gets pissed at margo and is like you betrayed our secret bond so I thought, like, maybe he just made something up to get her to leave. No, I think that that also ties in with the fact that um, Elsa, it, like, out of all the chefs and out of all the staff, Elsa is the most independent out of this pulse, essentially. Yeah. Because she, just with that one line earlier you'll eat less than you'll desire, or you'll eat more than you deserve, but you'll eat less than you desire, something like that. Because that's when she breaks his menu. She steps out of the lines that she's supposed to stay in. Mm. Yeah. I feel like, to me, it felt like he intentionally left it out. I think it was unintentional that Elsa died and that she reacted the way that she did. Hmm. Which is also, like, proof that she's not playing the role that the chef wants her to play. Um, because if she was, she wouldn't have gone after Margot. But because she's not playing the role that the chef wants her to play, she goes after Margot. Hmm. And then she dies preemptively. Yeah. No. I just thought he was like, oh, I need the way to get her to, like, 
go and but yeah. I thought that that was more of a of the moment thing yeah I don't know I mean I could definitely be reading too much into it that that's how I took it I do you think that we took it to out else like was it playing from the moment that she did that or was it after excusing Tyler I think the only part of that that was planned was that there was supposed to be a barrel and he planned not to tell Elsa because his plan was for one of the guests to find the radio. I didn't think he planned that part. I think he did. Because I, I, because he had the postcard ready. Upset that I think he's genuinely upset that Margo called the postcard. Like he knew, like he had to have like a backup. A back in case someone, like someone did, but like I think he's genuinely, genuinely upset because he goes like, "Oh, you broke our sacred bond." To which then she's like. Like, she essentially lashes out. And this is honestly, that scene between them is a great, like, it's a case study in subtext. <laughs> because they're having an entire conversation that leaves the audience know and understand because of scenes between them that we've seen. Yeah. But they are also having a conversation that is completely, like, like, you can follow the conversation as a person that has never heard or, like, seen the scenes that we've had. Like, everyone in the audience is like, yeah, no, this is a normal conversation we're having. Because she... Then is like, I'm not gonna take this from you, but you can't get mad at me for trying to like live. Mm-hmm. Like you've already like agreed that I'm not a taker, and that yeah. like or I'm not an eater. Yeah, because <laughs> he he insults her. He's like, you're an eater. You broke our sacred bond. And then she's like, hang on. If that's the case, then fuck you, I'm going to send the food back. I'm not an eater. I don't want to eat this food. Mm -hmm. And goes on her monologue. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. I think it could still be both. I think he planned for someone to call the Coast Guard. But I think because it was her that called the Coast Guard, he felt betrayed. Hmm. But he also kind of chased. Well, I mean, any of the guys, but they yeah. had, like being chased at the time. She didn't know she was going to be chased. They were followed. Well, I don't think she was supposed to be followed. Yeah. Okay. Because Elsa, Elsa died. Like she died preemptively. Well, because Margo killed her. <laughs> yeah, but it was the attack. Okay, so you think that he did the whole barrel thing for the purpose of the Coast Guard. I think he did the barrel thing for the purpose of outing Elsa for her sins. Okay. Is he murder? Yes. He, okay. Yes, okay. Yeah. It makes sense when you put it like that. I was like, where is it that I was like, because we're... No, mind. Yeah. So one of the things in the office while she's in there... Mm-hmm. Um, that I didn't catch, but when I was listening to people discuss the film, uh, learned about was, uh, Chef Slowick, um, one of the restaurants that he kind of started at, one of the gourmet restaurants that he started at, Mm -hmm. um, was called Tantalus. And Tantalus, I guess, in mythology, is this guy who sacrificed his own son to serve to the gods. And then the gods, as punishment, cursed him so that um, all food uh, would taste like dirt and uh, water would taste like ash. And he could no longer enjoy um, things like food. And that felt like a very, like, thematic kind of, like, Easter egg to throw in there. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially also because, like, not only has he, like, become so disillusioned with food that he doesn't take enjoyment from it the same way that Tantalus no longer took enjoyment from it. But he also essentially like sacrificed his son, AKA sous Su- chef Jeremy. R.P. Jeremy. Yeah. Jeremy. Sorry, I'm walking at the cricket. Oh, it's probably <laughs> inside too. <laughs> <laughs> like, these crickets are ridiculous. Was Jeremy 
I thought it was Jeremy's idea. To kill himself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. But, I mean, you've got the chef and the sous chef, which is theoretically supposed to be, like, this father-son relationship. Oh, like a second. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And, once again, I could be reading into it too much with that aspect. Um, oh, no, because I was, like, yeah. I was, like, oh, his son is, like, his restaurant. <laughs> uh, so, I was, like, either way. Yeah. <laughs> the significance is the same. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, because when Margo's in there, she sees all the the like pictures that he has which is kind of funny is that in every single photo he's just he looks absolutely miserable except for the one photo with the the burger where is like the happiest point of his life mm -hmm. um and then we just get another little comedic break oh we now are in the dining room and they're singing happy birthday <laughs> To Bryce and he's like you told him it was our it was my birthday and Soren's like it seemed funny like three hours ago which I admit <laughs> was probably true like that is hilarious yeah like they would be the kind of guys to go to a fancy restaurant and be like oh let's get a free dessert because it's someone's birthday it'd be funny it's even funnier if it actually is his birthday for real I took it at that as it was. I did too. Yeah. I just realized that people lie about that all the time. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't realize that either. But you're right. Like that's just so funny, and like, just the, the like, lol. We're gonna celebrate it because you're dying tonight. <laughs> yeah. This is funny. Um. Yeah, and then and then Margot enters with the barrel in a very loud fashion um which then leads us to and honestly is so funny when he's like sitting there and he says something like someone's like someone says something about like oh this is like a crazy thing to be doing something like that to which the chef answers with a freaking Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. quote. <laughs> yeah. Which I laughed so hard at. Yeah. In the theater. I literally <laughs> was like, that is the funniest joke of the whole movie. Because <laughs> I was like, not only like as a black person watching it and knowing that almost like every white person ever that's trying to justify anything that they've ever done will be like, oh yeah, and then they'll quote Dr. King. Mm -hmm. But then just the fact that he actually quotes Dr. King, like, with a great, like, a quote that most people wouldn't choose. Like, most people that, like, quote Dr. King, quote, like, oh, he had a dream, or, like, yeah, like, all of the, like, really inspiring ones. But they don't ever really quote the more, like, radical ideal ones. Mm -hmm. And so he talks about, like, the oppressed and the oppressor and, like, freedom. And I'm just like, he really chose that quote. <laughs> It was just so funny, and then and then uh, freaking George goes like, "Did he just quote Dr. King?" And the other guy's like, "He did." <laughs> this is funny because the two people that acknowledge that are the people of color in the room. I was just like, "That is so funny to me." Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I just thought that was hilarious. But then as that's happening, the the boat horn goes off mm -hmm. and Margot smiles because she's like, yes, finally someone's here and someone, uh, I think the food critic lady is like, did you call for help? And she's like, I did, yeah. She like nods very quietly and goes like, uh-huh. And then the guy comes in and is like, did anybody call for help on shortwave radio? And he makes the joke of, well, I don't think, you know, we're in the habit of serving our guests shortwave radios. <laughs> With their meals. Yeah. It's a stupid line. Um, they, like, clean up all the guests before he gets there. And they, like, mm -hmm. you know, like, tell him, like, don't you dare uh, say a word. They really play up the fact that they have no idea that the Coast Guard oh, is in on it. Yeah. And um, then yeah, yeah. they're like, no, don't point the gun at us. Don't do that. No, it, it's him. It's him. Um. Which I'm fairly certain happens after he walks in. He, like, walks in, 
He asks about, like, anybody making a distress call. He notices George asks for an autograph. Uh, or, well, he doesn't ask for an autograph. He says, is that, like, are you the guy? Like, we actually love that one movie of yours, which is the movie that the Chef hates. Yeah. And it's kind of funny. Um, and then Chef's like, oh, well, do you want it? Do you want an autograph? So, I mean, it, it's not too much trouble. They, like, do the whole, like, he's famous mm. thing. Um, which should have been the tip-off when he mentioned that it was the movie that you really, yeah, yeah, because that yeah. one movie, what, what's it called? You're like a, you're like a doctor, you go calling your C-section, and he like looks directly at the chef. Yeah. Gives him the thing, and he writes like a call for help, like he, yeah. he writes like help us, like on it. Um, and the guy's walking away, he reads it, pulls out his gun, and we all think like, oh, maybe he's actually like gonna help them. They all think he's absolutely gonna help them. He's like waving his gun around, they're like, no, it's him, it's him, it's him, but not the guy. Um. And then he does point it at Chef, and everyone's like, yes, oh my god, yes, we're free, like, amazing. They're, like, celebrating and crying and happy. Um, and then he slowly points the gun at Margo, and everyone's like, no, it's not her. And then he lights the candle, because his his, his gun is actually a lighter. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then he, like, takes a bow and leaves. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He goes, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know, a great See, so that's, that's why I thought it was part of the plan, was because he was just so theatrical about it, <laughs> that I'm just like, oh, that, that was, like, you know, he, that was his part to play, like, he was supposed to be there, like, he was supposed to offer some type of, like, hope or redemption. That's funny. Yeah. No, I just thought it was, like, one of those things where it's, like, if a guest does call for help, like, this is the plan. But, gotcha. like, I didn't think it was, like, a part of the menu. Gotcha. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is just so fucking funny. Uh, so, yeah, he, like, Then he accuses Margo of being a taker. He says, I was wrong about you. You're an eater. You're a taker. You betrayed our sacred bonds. Um, and then, you know, he, like, sits her down and then goes back to the kitchen. To which Margo then has a moment of, like, are you fucking kidding me? She claps her hands really loud like the chef does, gets a little attention. Um, she goes, I don't like your food. And he goes, what is it? about the food that you don't like. She goes, I don't like your food, I'm sending it back. Um, to which he says, what is it about the food that you don't like? And he says, she says, um, you've taken the joy out of eating. Um, your food's loveless, it's made without love. Yeah, your love. food's yeah. loveless, it's made without love. He says, of course, well, no, we definitely cook with love in the kitchen, isn't that right? And everyone's like, you're a chef. And she goes, no, you cook with a step, uh, with obsession, not love. Um, you failed at serving people food that they act might actually like. Um, not only that, I'm so fucking hungry. Yeah. <laughs> and so he goes, well, like, what would you like? And she says, a cheeseburger. And he's like, I can make a cheeseburger. And she goes, I don't want some, like, deconstructed bullshit. Like, I want a real cheeseburger. And he goes, I can make a cheeseburger. And she, and he goes, I'll make you a cheeseburger that um will remind you of the first time you ever ate one. And she says, he says, how would you like it? And he goes, she says, medium American cheese. And he goes, American cheese is the perfect, is the perfect cheese for a cheeseburger because it doesn't split. And then she says, how much will that set me back? And he'll go, nine. He says like nine ninety five or something. She goes, does that come with fries? And then he has he says, Is the fryer still on? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, Chef. Would you like crinkle cut or um shoestring, I'm assuming. Yeah, but something he's like a different that. word for it, yeah. Like sliced or whatever. Um he makes the burger. He actually smiles, so you can tell he enjoys making it. And honestly that burger looks so fucking good. I think, so, I think by asking him to make this burger and by calling him out, she finalizes the, um, empathetic link between yeah. them. And she's just, like, and she, and and a lot of people are saying, like, she's finding, like, this loophole 
she's reminding him and taking him back to his past and making him enjoy cooking again. But I, I think, think that. I don't think that either. I think what's happening for me is that she's proving that there are still people out there who can essentially enjoy art and they're not just consuming it to consume it. Yeah, like and they she, can understand all the nuances yeah. that go into it. But at the end of the day, they still also like things for the fact of liking them. Yeah. And so I think, and I think that's what she's doing. She's like, no, I, I appreciate, I understand it and I like it. Yeah. Therefore I don't deserve to die as someone who just consumes art or as the burnt out artist, mm -hmm. because she's also a burnt out, essentially service worker. Mm -hmm. She's like, I'm neither a giver or a taker. I am some third party. Blank, yeah. 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 And I think it, it also solidifies like, like, she doesn't deserve to die, um, but by, like, making her the cheeseburger, it kind of gives him the full circle of, like, his redemption arc, yeah. or, like, purification his process before doing the final, like, sacrifice yeah. thing. Um, but Jesus Christ, that burger looks so good. Like, I want <laughs> so bad. <laughs> like, I'm... I'm very hungry right now. Same. No. Yeah. There's a burger place in there. I'm the only one I can think of off the top of my head. No, there are two. And it's probably neither one that, neither of them are going to be the one you're talking about. But I remember seeing Sonic and Carl's Jr. No, no, the one I'm talking about is like, look at it. It's like in the movie type burger. Oh, wow. They're like, let me give you a greasy just burger. And ugh, I want one so bad. Let's do that. <laughs> it's within walking to see. Nice. Too. Okay. <laughs> it's only three blocks away. That's Actually, it's less than that. Um. Anyway, back to the podcast. We need to get burgers <laughs> after this. Um. I literally wrote down in my notes, cheeseburger looks bomb ass. <laughs> she eats a burger and goes, "No, that's a cheeseburger." Um. And then I, I think it's a great touch that she pays him the ten, yeah. the ten dollars in cash. Yeah. Um. And then I think it's kind of just really fun that she asks him, like, "Oh, can I?" Can I take it to go? Which again, the subtext is absolutely brilliant. Of like, can I take it to go? Like, does this mean that I can leave? And he's mm -hmm. like, yes. Yeah, you've proven that I'm wrong, and there are still essentially like good people in the world. Yeah. Um. So she gets out. She goes to the boat. Figures out how to do all that thing. Um. And then you have the s'more dish. Which is the final dessert uh, that they all get before they're gonna die, and it is so freaking absurd. Mm -hmm. Everything that goes into it, which I just, I was like, this is so funny. Yeah, because <laughs> it, it's giving midsummer, but like parody. <laughs> I was like, the way the chocolate's like running down her face. Yeah. Like... <laughs> I goes. Oh, we go. Uh, my one of my favorite parts about that scene is they were like, in my opinion. They were kind of like foreshadowing the whole thing because in almost every shot inside the restaurant, you see fire somewhere in the background. Yeah, it's just so funny. And like the way that they did the most elaborate plating on the ground for that. Yeah. With like the peanut butter and like, you know, like they have all their other, like the random toppings people random will crackers, do to yeah. like make us more better. And he's, he literally says like that the s'more with the like, like, um, unethical, unethically like bought chocolate and the, the like stale graham cracker and the uh, I think he said something about the marshmallow, something along the lines of I think like the fact that it's like the unwanted gelatin, <laughs> yeah, of like he says it's yeah. everything wrong with us yet we associate it with innocence, yeah, and yeah this is so funny and then he goes but the thing that makes us more the s'more of course is the fire and that this thing that is absolutely horrid is now great and can be enjoyed through the purification of fire to which he lights <laughs> himself on fire mm -hmm. and the rest of the place with it and then all the the chefs turn on the gas of their ovens and the place blows up and Margot watches it and takes a bite of her burger. Yeah, because Margot has previously escaped um, on a Coast Guard boat. Yeah, on a boat. Yeah. <laughs> that has run out of gas, but yeah. she's far enough away to be safe. And in one of those areas where, like, 
yeah, as soon as the daylight, or not even daylight, like, there is the Coast Guard, so, like, mm-hmm. they would be doing their shifts in the yeah. Have you seen the, um, the... I guess the argument on whether or not she actually escaped, um, like, or whether or not she died because of the burger. No. Okay. So I'll, I'll, tell, you the, I'll tell you the argument about I how. That. Okay. <laughs> so I disagree. I disagree with this for a couple reasons. I disagree with just the fact that they had a theory that she did in fact die. Yeah. So I'm like, well, now you're thinking too much into it. It was yeah. not like. But so the, the you were the antithesis <laughs> of the spill. So the argument that she died is they're using the meat from the smell cows, and oh, that that, that meat really? has been uh, yeah. smoked essentially for too long, and so now it's got the bad bacteria, and that bad bacteria is now going to travel to her spinal column and kill her in a couple hours. Um, and because the menu won't work unless everybody dies. The menu was already messed up, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> because she was the substitution. Yes. Um, right from the beginning. But yeah, I disagree with the, that fact because um, I Stop think Stop being too, a Tyler. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think he's too proud. I think he would be too proud to use bad meat in yeah, a challenge. Yeah, I don't use bad meat, especially in something that one of those things it, it is 100 percent calling back to his past yeah and um, yeah like especially after being called out like that like uh-huh you're doing this and you are no better than everyone yeah. else here that kind of and it's you know the full circle of him going back to his roots and proving that he can make food that people like and he can enjoy it yeah, and he can and enjoy it's making quite that food. literally the last thing he does, which is enjoy making food before he passes. Yeah, which um, would be the full circle mm-hmm. of redemption. Mm-hmm. And then fire with everything going up in flames is the whole rebirth of the self mm-hmm. and the freedom of you know escaping the bonds of being um, a consumer who is stuck in the same rut of you know not enjoying the art that they're given. And using it as a status symbol. Yeah. Um, and then the artist being stuck in the rut of providing only things that consumers can use mm-hmm. as a status symbol. And not enjoying the art that they're creating anymore. Because they're so burnt out. Mm-hmm. I like this movie personally. Like one of my favorite reasons that I like this movie is because it really, it like kind of serves as a reminder. Because like you and I are film critics. Like we watch movies, we deconstruct them. But then. I feel like both of us are also very aware of the fact that there are a lot of film critics that, like, suck and yeah. kind of, like, take the joy out of, like, deconstructing movies and, yeah. like, finding out, like, oh, what makes this movie work and all of that stuff. And, like, we absolutely will admit that we have so many movies that we know are critically bad, mm-hmm. but we don't care because it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> that woman. <laughs> like like we will watch those movies and we will rave about them and like it it's something that i think like even in our reviews these. like even yeah. when we review them like we just reviewed barbarian and you were like i, I don't like those movie like you could you were like critically yeah like these things make sense and it's like good at being a movie mm-hmm. i just didn't like the movie yeah <laughs> which is valid like and this movie the menu is just like a good reminder of that. Mm-hmm. I feel like if people actually, you know, take it for, <laughs> they take it at face value and so yeah. being annoying, but like mm-hmm. everyone's gonna be annoying, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But yeah, because there was that one TikTok of the girl that was like, I thought the movie was fun, but I like didn't care enough about yeah. it to like I want to rave about it, and I was like, that's valid. And then I was like, who's telling you that's not valid? And she's like, I literally have not met a single person that hasn't been like, oh my god, you just didn't get it and gone on to explain the movie. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, did they watch the movie? <laughs> but anyway. Um, we have to play FMF. Okay. Who would your three men be it's funny because i had a brief thought about it. like i hadn't really thought about it until i had to go use the restroom like five seconds ago <laughs> and i was like oh crap we have to do fmf and i was like should we just consider 
the tech bros as one one man. Like they're just they're a unit. <laughs> I wouldn't mind doing that. Um I wouldn't mind doing that. Which is also funny because I don't wanna do anything with the majority of the prominent men of the film. Yeah. Like there is Nicholas Holt Tyler, yeah. who is probably the most prominent, like main character guy. Aside from the Chef Slovak Slovak himself. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to put Slovak into the rotation. Really? Yeah. I don't know why. Just don't want to. Okay. But my replacement for Slovak was gonna be Jeremy. <laughs> because I just think Jeremy's uh... <laughs> Wait, so who we you would do Tyler Jeremy Tech guys? Yeah. Interesting. Tech guys being one single entity. Because <laughs> like if it was me, and we might just have to do two different ones, like one for you, one for me. We could do that. I would do Tyler Slowick, and maybe I feel like um George the actor. Oh. Because, like, I feel like you know the most about the set guys because there's three of them. There's three of them and they talk so much. Yeah, so but if you annoying. discount the fact that there's three of them and you try to, like, piece together them individually, there's mm -hmm. not much to them. But out of the other men that we know the most about, I would argue that it's George. Because you know about um, his relationship with his assistant, all the different houses he has, um, you know, that... He... <laughs> that his wife doesn't know about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one that his wife doesn't know about and then you know that you know he's like this fading actor who's not really good at his job and yeah he's probably like the the most or the character that is the next most the flesh. foil yeah. probably uh, like slowly yeah so that those are the three that i would do but if you want to do your three i'll do my three okay I have to think about it. Yeah, same here. <laughs> I was like, wait, no, I have to do. I just picked them. Like now, I gotta think about them. Brendan, yikes! It's more of a yikes for who I would marry. I know, I'm like just yikes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think I got mine. I'd fuck Tyler just to get him away. One done. See you later. Um, I'd marry George the actor. Because he doesn't, like, aside from the fact that he's an annoying name dropper, he overall doesn't seem, like, too bad of a person. Um, certainly annoying and he's got bad habits. <laughs> but overall, he doesn't have, like, <laughs> out of the three of the guys, he has the least red flags. Um, I couldn't tell throughout this whole movie if he was actually screwing her or not. Like, if they were having an affair. I I thought that at the beginning when she talked about the house that his wife doesn't know. But then, kind of, like, as their relationship became, like, more unraveled. Yeah. It didn't seem like they were. Like, I have no idea. Yeah. And it's not really important. I think, <laughs> but, I think yeah. if there was ever a time... For that to come out, it would have been during Man's Folly. Yeah. Because you'd have a power imbalance. Because he goes like, yeah. I wrote a better recommendation. Like that. Is yeah. His, yeah. <laughs> his concession. Uh, yeah, I probably would have. So, yeah. I And and he's letting her steal money and not punishing her. <laughs> Except for the bad review. But that's more, I think. But he's he seen her. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, I think that was just him That's being so stupid. Funny. Yeah, I think that was him being stupid, but I think no, that he gave it. the bad review because he, like, didn't want her to leave because the yeah, whole time he's trying to keep her. Money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'd marry him. Fun fact, that cricket is inside. Oh. Hello, little guy. <laughs> um, he's an idiot. He's an idiot. But I'd marry him. Okay. Least red flags. Um, and then I'd friend zone Slowick. Okay. Because he's crazy. I would fuck tech guys. Uh, Tyler would assume he's in the friend zone, so mm. he's friend zoned. 
um, and Mary Jeremy. Okay. Suja. Nice. He's really pretty too. <laughs> He's the prettiest one in my opinion. I don't know who I'd choose. I don't. I, it's probably because I know the least about him. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. It's like in the fact that he let himself get inducted into a cult. Yeah. He realized. <laughs> Was it the worst cult? Yes. Is it? Is it? A it's a suicide cult. <laughs> But was it always meant to be a suicide cult? Mm. No. Now I'm getting too much into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we gotta read it. Yeah. I read it on Letterbox. I think gave it a four out of five. So, I would say. Four out of five for me is like an eight out of ten. That's what I gave it. Yeah. Just because, like, there were moments where it was, like, super on the nose. Yeah. Some of the comedy was definitely just for comedy's sake and not for, mm -hmm. like, anything. The cake scene. So funny. <laughs> <laughs> I I gave it an eight out of ten because I would recommend it. I mm -hmm. would rewatch it. I'm planning to rewatch it with my mom. Mm. Um. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah. I also thought it was fun. Just yeah. in general. Like yeah. like if someone were to tell me like, oh, there's like these plot holes, blah blah blah, like I wouldn't care. Like I wouldn't be surprised, but I also wouldn't care. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like yeah, it's a fun movie. I'd watch it again, recommend it. Um I also don't think it's like mind blowing or like No. Life changing, like it's 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 no everything everywhere all at once or the woman king, you know. Like I'm not <laughs> thinking about it all the time. Oh, I would, just the the um, like if I was reminded of it, I'd be like, oh yeah, things about this movie. But like I don't just like, I'm not like driving down the street, stop at a stoplight, and I'm like, oh my god, that movie was amazing. No, I mean <laughs> not like I did with the woman king and everything yeah. in the world. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would definitely, like, I did spend a lot of time thinking about it, um, just, I guess, like, philosophically, from trying to, like, understand Slowick's viewpoint, mm. um, and the relationship between consumerism and art, and just the commentary on that in general. I think and the then, other thing is, like, it's not new. Oh, yeah, it yeah, it's, like it's a new take it's certainly, like, yeah, it's certainly not a new take. But I liked the take. Yeah, but I, I think it's, um... It's a new, it's a, I say new take of an old topic. Yeah. It's a new take of an old topic in an accept, accessible way that's going to reach. Yeah. It is space. very, like, easy for, yeah. like, like, it is not pretentious in the way that it does it. Which, of course, yeah, I feel like is the point. Uh-huh. Which was also one of those things that I was like, when people were like, oh, you didn't get it. I was like, it's not one of those movies, though. Yeah. I was like, how are you being pretentious about something that's pretentious? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, because there's definitely movies where I'm like, oh, like, I really like this movie, but it's pretentious as fuck, you know? I, well, so I've got things that I wrote down that I haven't talked about yet that I think would make it seem a lot more pretentious. Yeah. Like, um... Just, like, in regards to what it says about religion, to like, the commentary that it has on religion itself. Um, and I feel like that would just extend... We're eating the ocean. <laughs> no, not even that. Like, I, like, I guess the, it'd be most, um... So my cusp most commentary, is... <laughs> like, I guess, like, Christian Christianity. Because, like, there's 12 guests, 12 disciples, uh, the seven deadly sins how everyone sees Slowik as God and then Jeremy sacrifices himself the same way Jesus did. The sacrificial lamb as they're being led into the restaurant. Yeah, like for the sins of these people. Yeah. No, there were actually like goats leading them into the restaurant. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, so I therefore, was still thinking yeah. about Jeremy. <laughs> no, yeah, so therefore like the goats show that they're the sacrificial lambs for mm -hmm. his ideology. Ideology ideology yes thank you 
So, I mean, I think there is... But then Margot being the, like, mm. kind of... Not Mary Magdalene, but like the the woman as no. well. Like the, I, I think she's one of the. Uh, she's one of the ones that they would persecute if they knew oh, who I was she was. Say. But he's like, you like I eat with the sinners. She's a sinner that he eats with. Okay, I can appreciate that take. I was gonna say like if she was anyone, she'd be one of the gospel writers. You know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. No, oh, yeah, because so she's the one who survived. Well, that still works story. because yeah, there we're also super. That's true. Tax collectors. Yeah. <laughs> I like that we're showing off our Bible knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Good girl that grew up in homeschool and Christian places, works in a church, and Catholic raised. <laughs> oh, I, I went to Catholic school kindergarten through college. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't go to Catholic school. I think most of mine were like Methodist or Baptist. They, the majority of them were non-denominational, but, like, had a little bit more of a leaning to, like, those two traditions. You, have you heard the stereotype, the fastest way to um, leave the church is to go to Catholic school? I haven't, but it makes sense. Yeah. Because most people that I meet, like, if their only knowledge of, like, Jesus and, like, Christ and God is Catholic, they're like, I don't like Christianity. And I'm like, well, yeah, that makes complete sense. Yeah. <laughs> this is, I think Catholics are kind of crazy. Yeah. Very, very hypocritical. Mm-hmm. I mean, I still consider myself Catholic, and it's something that I still believe in, but the the church itself is yeah. extremely problematic. <laughs> but takes for another time. <laughs> Talk for some other time. Yeah. <laughs> And like I work at a church, it's a non-denominational church, and I also consider myself to be Christian, but a non-dogmatic one. Mm. So yeah. High five. <laughs> what else do we have to do? Are we almost? I think that's oh recommendations. That? Oh yeah, recommendations. I'm gonna start. Yeah, you do that because technically. I don't have any recommendations. The closest thing I could recommend is a movie I have not watched. Um, And I'm only recommending this because according to TikTok, like everyone on TikTok is, and other articles too. I just Mm -hmm. haven't read them because I haven't seen the movie. Um, they're they're just discussing it and they both say like you know there's so many things in this movie that you don't catch you have to rewatch it there's a lot of like subtle things that you just need to appreciate and they talk about it the same way that i view this movie where for me for the menu i think i'm partially one of those pretentious film people where it's just like you don't understand that you have to like watch it but i'm also not gonna like shove that down someone's throat <laughs> yeah um <laughs> Like, if you want to discuss it, I'll talk about it. Yeah. (laughs) But, but, so, as another movie that you should probably watch multiple times to fully understand it, um, I'm going to recommend Glass Onion. That's funny. I was going to recommend Glass Onion, and I have seen it. (laughs) And I agree (laughs) with everything that you just said. Um... No, I really like Glass Onion, but I've actually only seen it once, and I do plan on watching it at least another time, but I did enjoy it. Um, yeah, that's so funny. I also would have said Knives Out, mm. which is funny because I actually rewatched that one recently and liked it better the second time. So, yeah. Nice. Like, I, I was like, yeah, that's a good movie the first time I watched it, but I'm like, you'll think it's like the best thing ever <laughs> i still don't think it's like the best thing yeah. ever i was just like i did pick up on a few things that i was like oh that's that's a good touch or like oh that's that makes that even funnier mm-hmm. kind of a thing like yeah kind of, i would recommend both seasons of the white lotus if you're not looking for television if you are looking for television if you're not looking for a movie. Because <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> I did watch that and I enjoyed those. Um, 
I feel like after, okay, so hearing that and after watching this movie, I feel like I should actually probably give that show a chance. Because, like, I watched the trailer for the show. And Which just season it, trailer did you the watch? The first season. The first season? I'm not going to lie. I would just skip it. Hmm. Like, and if you did want to watch it, watch it after the second season. So I think the second season is a little bit more accessible, like, and less mental energy <laughs> than the first season. Uh, is a perfectionist? I can't do that. But none, of, well, I guess Tanya's technically in both seasons, but, like, you don't learn anything in either season that makes it feel like you had to watch something before. Okay, that's good. And she's the only character. Yeah. Um. I, well, I, so I saw the first season trailer, and I didn't want to watch the show, because it just, the trailer felt like it'd just be, like, a really, like, satirically pretentious show, and I'm like, if I'm going to watch that, I have to be in the mood for it, and by yeah. the time I'm in the mood for it, this is probably going to be a show that no one's ever going to talk about, and then everyone started talking about it, I'm like, okay, maybe eventually I'll give it a try, but, like, now I have to be in the mood, and by the time I'm going to be in that mood, I'm not even going to remember it. So yeah. there's no point. I'd say, like, like, because people don't really start talking about it a lot until the second season. Um, and that's definitely because the second season is a lot more, like... I, I heard so many people talking about the first like season. Reachable, I yeah. guess. I've had so many people recommend, like, they came up to me, like, friends and family, like, specifically, like, Whitney, have you seen this show? Like, they, because they just assume, they're like, this is something that of course she would watch like of course this is like something that she would like like this is gonna be an amazing show i need to talk about it with someone hmm. and then i told them like no it didn't interest me at all and it's just like the shocked pikachu meme that's so funny yeah yeah i think the second season is like like less of a pill to swallow you gotcha. know like it, like yeah. if you don't have the mental energy to like sit through and like watch it the yeah. second season because they're in a different location mm-hmm. and like, it is, like, a satirical thing when you, like, go into it. And I think it's, like, a little more, like, less subtle, but, like, in a way that just makes it not hard to understand. Yeah. I don't know if it's still recording. I'm extremely confused because I thought we were recording through my phone. Oh, I thought the phone was just a camera. I don't know what's happening. (laughs) Hello? You know, this is on mute. I'm confused. Yeah. I don't it's really recording. Anymore. Well, it's still, it looks like it's it still says recording. It's recording. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. When it comes to satirical shows, and so typically when I think of satire, I'm thinking about like commentaries on society. Mm-hmm. Um, and when it comes to those type of shows, I have to be in the opposite mood of what they're trying to comment on because if I was to be in the mood of whatever they're trying to comment on or like thinking about it or like being depressed about it oh, or yeah like just down that rabbit hole I can't laugh about it until I fully come to accept no no not, not even like not even like accepting it I just like I have to be in the opposite mood because like if I go down further into the rabbit hole with yeah by intaking whatever media it would be confirming it. I'd just be an echo chamber of, yeah. like, thought that I don't want to be in, and yeah. i just get trapped further. No, I feel that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's why I like, like, the second season's, like, easier. Gotcha. Than the first one. Okay. Like, it's, it's stuff that, like, we've been making jokes about and, like, talking about in society to the point where it's not, like, overwhelming anymore. Okay. Or, like, you can laugh at it. Yeah. Okay, okay. I would also recommend this is maybe a random one. Definitely a little bit more on the like horror side. Um 
Neon Demon. I don't think I ever saw that one. I was working in theaters when it came out. But that one is the more, like, pretentious. Gotcha. Like. Film bro. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And also maybe Midsummer, just because of that chocolate scene. (laughs) I'm not. I'm never going to watch Midsummer. I love Midsummer, but. Yeah. The only thing I really know about Midsummer is it's a horror movie, which I already don't like. And when it came out in theaters and I was working in theaters, there was, I'm pretty sure it was this one. And if it's not, it's what I remember it to be. Um, There was just one scene that I always happened to walk by the theater at. And it's just screaming. Just like, it felt like minutes of just like <laughs> screaming and it wouldn't end. And the, like I'm just like, that sounds like the most annoying movie ever. I that's funny because I think I know exactly what scene you're thinking of. Okay. But that's funny. I don't want to say anything because okay. that's like all <laughs> it's just like because I kept hitting that one scene. That's so funny. Every time I pass At by least... the theater, like in my mind, the only thing about this movie is it's a movie about people screaming. Which oh. I understand it's not. That's funny. But it's just like like yeah, like once that's like ingrained wise, in you, yeah, yeah, it's ingrained that it's the only thing that happens in this movie is screaming. Because how many times, like how unlucky must I be to You're only very pass that like this that theater during that one scene? If it's only one scene, it really that's yeah. That's <laughs> it literally happens like one time. There's like crying moment, and then there's like a moment that parallels it like way after. Mm. And that's only because I've seen the movie 20 million times, probably. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm not going to watch that movie. No, you probably... I don't think you would like it. Okay. Good. Thank you. Like, it's, it's one of those, like, just a like horror-type movies that I'm like, I wouldn't put you through that. Okay, thank you. It's, it's so comfy. Gotcha. Oh, I did think of another recommendation. I care a lot. That is another one of those movies where, like... The nursing home one? Yeah. Okay. It's, like, a commentary, but then it does end up coming, like, full circle. And I think we actually... I think we should talk about it on the podcast. That would be a fun one to talk about. Okay. I definitely have to rewatch it. I know I found it kind of boring, but I also don't know if that's because of how I was watching it. Like, I can't remember if I had it on in the background or if I was, like, actively watching it. Um, but, I mean, I'd, I'd be willing to reevaluate. Yeah, we should watch that one. Because I haven't seen it in a bit. I just remember, like, I remember defending the ending. Because mm-hmm. it was one of those endings where it can be controversial as far as, like, one specific trope of, like, burying your gaze. Mm-hmm. And people were kind of upset. They were like, dang, like, they really can't catch a break. And I, the only reason I was defending it was because I was like, well, the ending isn't about them being gay. Like, they aren't being punished for being gay. Mm. Like, they didn't die for that reason. In which most media is like, that is what it is. It's like, yeah, it's a punishment. And so they end up dying so that they can, like, essentially punish the idea of gayness but I was like in the in the context of this of I care a lot movie they're actually punishing those that like use capitalism to their benefit okay and like strive off of the essential like oppression and non-well-being of people that can't really protect themselves or do anything for them Mm mm-hmm Okay. And I was like, that's why she died. It has nothing with her to do with her being gay. Granted, it does suck that she was also gay. They were gay. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that they didn't get like a happy ending. But I was like, this character couldn't have a happy ending, otherwise the movie wouldn't be making the point that it was trying to make. Mm-hmm. 
interesting take to explore further when we do that when episode. We do that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, let us know what you guys thought about this movie. Um, there's definitely some clips and like TikToks that both you and I, Whitney and I, have been like thinking about and maybe referring to without really directly <laughs> referring to it that we'll probably post in our discord um for those of you that don't know we have a discord um that is accessible to any of our patreon patrons um any tier like at all so if you guys are interested in that go ahead and check us out on patreon um if that isn't a way that you are able to support us right now uh feel free just to you know like subscribe or give us a review anywhere that you find this podcast if you're listening on youtube if you're on just like any streaming platform um we would totally love that um follow us on instagram and tiktok we're there too and come have a chat and love to just communicate and have a little bit of a community with you guys so um yeah speaking of community we are also going to shout out our vip patrons they are the highest tier um so shout out to susan johnson and kawana coleman we we love you guys um and thank you so much for your extra support <laughs> um and yeah we will see you guys in the next one i'll talk to you guys in the next one we'll talk to you in the next one <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Joe. <laughs>